Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, June 4th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of chemistry. Researchers at Caltech have designed a new system that allows chemical messages to self-replicate. This method is particularly interesting because it does not rely on any biological enzymes, whereas conventional replication of information through DNA requires many enzymes and other protein mechanisms. It consists of what's called DNA tile crystals, a simple binary chemical message that will naturally grow into ribbon-like crystals, continuing the pattern with every layer. When these crystals are mechanically broken apart with a physical force, they continue to replicate. Theoretically, certain patterns in the crystals would replicate better than others, meaning that Darwinian-style evolution could take hold. It also suggests the possibility that crystals like this were perhaps the earliest self-replicating chemistry. Practical applications could also be derived from this research, such as self-replicating nanostructures for use in technology. Especially if two or three dimensional patterns are possible in this crystal system. If the chemical pattern inside the crystals could influence the physical structure of their growth, this would emulate a biological system, just as conventional DNA transcribes for proteins that affect the physical characteristics of a cell. Next is an update from the field of nanotechnology. A team at Iowa State University has designed new nanoparticles for the delivery of DNA and protein into plant cells. DNA insertion techniques have been in use for a long time, but protein insertion hasn't been possible until now, which makes this new development particularly important. With the addition of proteins, more sophisticated genome editing can take place. About five years ago, the team developed highly porous silica nanoparticles, but they were only about 100 nanometers in size, not quite large enough to store the functional proteins they were wanting to inject. So after some research, they managed to increase the size and add a gold coating to increase the binding of the payload molecules. They tested this by firing the new particles filled with a fluorescent green protein and red pigment gene. This has been successful in modifying onion, tobacco, and maize cells so far. It will hopefully help develop more advanced genetically modified crops, which are especially needed due to climate change and other changing environmental factors. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description. The first link is about a new series on this channel starting this summer. Definitely check it out.